Welcome to the Scary Show Unplugged. Tonight's true scary is from Nahola Rainbow. It gets weird on the road, so you just, it's something that you're used to, um, and you're always weary of, but just to kind of hear the after effects and knowing how lucky we actually got, like, who makes the heart race even now, like, it, like, really makes the heart race. I mean, you deal with some weirdos, like, I got picked up by one guy that, like, tried to assault me in his truck, and my, I, like, ended up hitting him in the head with a five-inch pipe wrench and like my dog bit him like I mean in transients go missing a lot um I remember this this one ride we were hitching out of um out of San Francisco we we're headed north um headed up to Laytonville for a festival there was me and three other kids like just some random kids I'd met up at Hippie Hill and we were all headed to the same location we got picked up out of uh, Santa Rosa by a um, by a, by a woman truck driver. Like she was, she was all cracked out on the speed. Like you, you could just you knew. Um, and she drops us off in Laytonville, and she's like, "We go to get out of the truck." And uh, the other kid we were hitchhiking, hitchhiking with, um, he was the last one out of the cab. And he, she grabbed a hold of his pack as he was climbing out, and she's like, "Oh no, not you, honey." You were staying with me. He had to like climb out of his pack and like bust it up his face on the tarmac trying to get away from this speed fucking trucker. Like this little lady with no teeth all cracked out on speed. Like it it gets real and it gets weird on the road sometimes. We ended up having to take him to the ER that night. He had broken his nose and like two black eyes trying to get away get out of the truck from this lady. Um so, this is a story of um, something that happened to me while I was hitchhiking with my dog uh, out in nor- Northern Cal. Uh, I was hitchhiking with uh, another couple and their three dogs. Um, and I'm going to refer to them as Stone and his mama because for the life of me, I can't remember her name. Um, we were just coming out of Garmentville. We were doing some trimming work up there and... You know, feeling pretty good about life, had a bunch of green in our pocket, and having a damn good time. And we were headed down to the Sequoia National Forest uh, down in SoCal uh, to do some camping. And uh, we were coming just outside of Eureka. We got picked up in a small little town. And uh, there's this guy in, like, a really nice, like, silver truck. And it was one of those, like, two doors with, like, the extended cab. and um, Seemed like a pretty nice dude when he picked this up. He had, like, a whole bunch of furniture and stuff in his truck, so we just assumed he was, like, moving. And uh, he's like, um, you know, I know I got a lot of stuff in, but I can squeeze it in. And, you know, we um, we pile in, and, um, you know, we get our dogs in, and we get our, our gear in and get ourselves in. And, like, this guy starts chatting us up, and he's like, driving down, you know, northern Cal, everything's like a windy, twisty road, especially, you know, when you get closer to the 101, and, like, he's, like, rolling a joint, it's, he's driving, and, like, chatting us up, we're, we're feeling pretty fucking good about this ride, you know, and, um, it's getting, it's pretty dark by the time we hit, you know, this little, uh, this little town just north of Mendo, and he's like, well, why don't you guys come stay with us, uh, with me tonight? You know, I can drive you down to Mendo in the morning. And we're like, oh, yeah, sure, man. You know, why not? You know, thinking we might get fed, get a shower, why not? And so we, he starts driving a little ways outside of town. And it's like one of those little country roads with this, like, the occasional spotlight on the road, like street light, And he pulls up to, like, this really nice um, it, double wide. And, like, we're kind of excited. And... He's like, all right, guys, uh, hold on a minute. You're going you're gonna to have to hang out here. I need to talk to my buddy. Now, as he talks to his buddy, um, there's, like, this camper, like, an old-school camper parked in, like, the backyard of this place. And it's got one of those, like, property street lights. And he goes up to the front porch, and he's, like, talking to this guy. And this guy's, like, hanging in the shadows. And, you know, 
and at that point, you know, you're, as an transient, as a hitchhiker, you know, you, you know when to read things, and we're all kind of sketched out about this. We're like, all right, well, you know, we'll just make sure you know somebody calls, you know, their family and let them know where we are. No, not no big deal. It's pretty standard practice for transients when they get picked up. And uh, so he talks to his buddy. We can't see the guy like at all. Like he's in like lurking in the shadows. So he comes back and he's like, "Oh yeah, my buddy's cool with it. Why don't why don't you guys come in? I'll I'll cook us some dinner. You guys can shower and whatnot." And we're like, "All right, cool, man." And we get out and we go inside. There is no furniture, none. There's not even a freaking chair in this double wide. No, and you don't kind of think anything of it because he's got a bunch of stuff in the bag. And he's like, well, you know, you guys hang out for a little while. I'm going to unload my stuff and, you know, I'll make us some dinner. Like, okay, man, no problem. We're like sitting in the living room on the floor, hanging out with our dogs and our packs and smoking some joints and having a good time. And, um, you know, he's bringing loads of stuff in and out and just kind of putting them in the bedrooms in the back. And we didn't think anything of it. He makes us his so probably some of the best stir fry I think I have ever had. This stir fry was so freaking good. You know, at this point, uh, he's like talking and just having the just the conversation we had with him. Like the longer we talked to him, the more and more everybody kind of seemed to be a little bit more reserved and sketched out about the guy. And it wasn't because he was saying creepy things or like weird things. It was just the feeling you got from him. And you know, we. We all did the whole call our parents thing. So after dinner, I like, hey, I was like, oh, hey, man, you mind if I, you know, call my call in and check with my parents? So I called my mom, and it's like 10 o'clock out there. So it was like 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. And I'm like, hey, mom, I'm in such and such town. You know, if you don't hear from me t- uh, tomorrow, I need you to call the cops. And you know, there's like nothing no mother ever wants to hear from her hitchhiking daughter. And she's like, what is going on? I'm like, mom, mom, calm down. Just, you know, just trying to be safe about it. If you don't hear me from me, but like noon tomorrow, I need you to call this, uh, this city's cop station. I don't remember the name of the town. And she's like, okay, okay, I can do that. I can do that. So go back inside. And, you know, we have like another joint, drink another beer. And we're like, all right, hey, man, we're, we're going to turn in. And he's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I want to show you guys my collection. And at this point, we're like, okay. So this is a three-bedroom trailer. He starts in one room, and he, like, has clothes and, like, toys and instruments and things set up in each room, like, displayed. You can't touch anything. You can't have anything. But he wants you to see it and know it's there. So at this point, like... All of your basic instincts are going, this is fucking creepy. This is really fucking weird. What is going on? So in the last bedroom, there is all of these family portraits. There must have been like 10 to 15 of them. And there are all these family portraits, and he's not in any of them. Like, we're super freaked out at this point. Why do you have all these family portraits when you're not in any of them? So now, you know, Stone, his mama, and myself are, like, really fucking freaked out. You know, we're debating whether or not to stay there. And we're trying to be, like, discreet. You know, like, should we just bail on this guy? Like, this is super fucking weird. Like, oh, my God. What is wrong with this guy? Is he going to murder us? Like, what the hell is going on? And we're, like, he's, like, all right. Well, let me show you guys to your room. Now, as he shows us to one of the rooms, as we walked in, um, Stone and his mama were ahead of me with their dogs and packs. And then um, I walked in last with my dog in here. And as I happen to look down at the door handle, the lock is on the outside of the door handle. Not on the inside like it should be, but on the outside of the fucking door handle. At this point, like, I, I like, grab Stone. I'm like, Stone, look at this, look at this. I show him the door handle. And, like, now we're, like, really freaking out. And, like, him, me, myself, and his girl, like, in the back corner, farthest from the door, and Stone's, like, standing there, you know, in between us and the door. And we're, like, really talking about what the hell we should be doing. Because this is super sketchy. You know, this is how, like, hitchhikers go missing and shit. And um, he comes into the room and he points at me. And he's like, you're coming with me. 
I was like, oh, no, man, I'm sorry. I, I don't roll that way. Like, I'm not that kind of entrancing. Like, I'm not that kind of hitchhiker. He's like, oh, you're, you're coming with me and, like, getting visibly angry. And I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm not going with you. That's not going to happen. And he, like, takes a step towards us and Stone, like, shoves him against the wall and just yells, grab your shit. We scooped up packs, dogs, everything, and we're out that front door in five fucking seconds. Like, super freaked out. Here we are, three hands in the middle of nowhere, running down, like, this paved country road, like, freaking out. And all of a sudden, we could hear him hop in his truck and start driving down the road. At this point, we just, I yelled, scram. And everybody jumped off into the woods in opposite directions, just hiding and i'm like on the side of the road in this like five foot ditch in a puddle holding my dog up against me with his mouth shut as he's driving up and down the road going i'm gonna fucking kill you you fucking dirty hippies you're gonna fucking get what's coming to you this went on for an hour of him going up up and down the road looking for us so about an hour we waited probably another 20 minutes and he didn't come back down the road so at this point, you know, I start yelling for Stone and his mama, and they happen to be just on the other side of the road in the ditch. We come out, we're like, all right, we gotta, we gotta get somewhere. So we start walking down this road. It was like a two mile walk to the end of the road. And right there was like a little seaside motel. So we go inside and we're like, hey, we need to use your phone. We need to call the cops. And like, this poor little old lady is looking at us like, we're gonna murder her. So we're all muddy, we're all wet, like you could tell we'd been through some shit. So come to find out, we call the cops, they show up and they're like, Well, you're actually kinda lucky, you know, in transients have been going missing here. We haven't found them. And they showed us like a list of like thirty intransient kids that had gone missing in the area. So at this point, you know, we're trying to help the cops as much as we can, like give them any and all information. And the little old lady ended up putting us up in her little seaside motel for the night and, like, giving us room to stay and everything. Like, we literally av- avoided an intransigent ser- serial killer. That, that, that is my takeaway. Like, this guy was picking off intransigents, and we just happened to get away. And even now, like, it makes my skin crawl thinking about it. I and beyond lucky that I was able to walk out of that house. Well, run, not walk. I'm actually all wound up right now from telling that story. And every time I tell it, like, it always, like, my adrenaline goes right back to that situation of, oh, my God, I'm going to die. So I am, I have tried to look um, now years later. And when I say years, I mean literally almost two decades later. And... Oh, about 15 years ago. And I've never been able to find anything um, about them catching the guy. So he could still be out there on the north, on the northwest coast, like picking up freaking entrancients. He could just be doing it from a different location now. He is like the safe guy that like brings them in. And then the guy in the back that we never saw is probably the one that murders them. So yeah, that's my story of my intransient serial killer. 30 kids. There was like 31 or 32 kids that had already gone missing in the area. And like, they had been looking for this guy. Like, that was like it for us. We headed to the closest commune and like laid low for a little while. And that that really rattled us. Yeah. Oh my god. <sighs> If you enjoy the stories you find here, hit the like button. Think of it like applause at the end of a show. Please subscribe and click the top bell for all notifications so that you never miss an episode. And if you wouldn't mind, share this video so that others can discover The Scary Show. Questions, comments, suggestions? Let me know down below. The Scary Show always answers the fans. Unless YouTube hides your comments from me.